evidence for god in dna itself lecture 6 professor dr c a nenan tuvandram in the previous lectures i have related the dna symbols h s o and i respectively to the soul psyche genome and the self in relation to pattern archetypes of dna in this lecture i shall relate the triple spirit to dna symbols which i have already done but for the sake of those who are uh listening to me for the first time i shall give um sort of a chart to which explains how from dna base lines that is the ta base lines of dna the three fields of the spirit can be formed the first one is the small i symbol of the ideating field of the spirit the condone is the latin cross relating to the sign field of the spirit and the third one is the bird field symbolized through the capital letter a of english i am also giving actually this um details appear on page 52 of my book cosmic code of life given as a figure 51 in the same book on page 55 i have given a composite picture of the three fields i plus a as a unified symbol of the triple spirit in fact the hierarchic relations of the three fields of the spirit are small i standing for idea or thought i plus small i plus standing for the sign field and small i plus a standing for the verb field which splits into spoken word and written word actually all letters of all languages spoken or written by man are vehicles of consciousness at the spirit level in this sense there are differences between spoken and written words in written words consciousness exists in the potential state while it is transacted intentionally through spoken words according to the bible the word of god is the vehicle of divine life and creativity i shall now bring your attention to a vision in the bible which relates to god as word that is the vision of prophet ezekiel on the banks of the river chebar recorded in the book of ezekiel chapter 1 of which i shall give a short summary to illustrate the point in reference ezekiel's vision of god in the chariot of life is an example of a a level of vision of god as spirit that is ezekiel 13 it starts with the vision of the word of the lord that came in a whirlwind from the north and finally transformed into the chariot of four four faced cherubs that these faces are a roaring lion a bellowing bull the chirping eagle and a worshiping man cherubs with the person of the eschatological christ john 858 above upon the cherubic throne this is an essentially spirit level 
macrocosmic vision of the son of god yet to incarnate into the kingdom of david as the bible has it the noise of great waters ezekiel 124 heard by the prophet clearly brings out the word aspect or the spirit aspect of god consciousness that is i am in the air field as the air field has always the i field within it this vision depicts the i am in the i air field of fielding of consciousness of god now i shall come to the concept of life as a language which is intimately related to the word aspect of dna above present in fact life is linked not only to the logos but also to language i have already explained in my earlier lectures especially lectures 1 and 2 in this series that life and logos are intimately linked due to the overlapping of the i plus hso codes of the cryptogram of dna with the i plus hso codes of the logo of the logos framed by the church nearly 2000 years ago in fact consciousness is a language that is consciousness as the principle of life is a language of is the genetic code belongs to the gross physical or scientific level of genes and proteins that is the o level the lingua franca of the consciousness has here as here conceived is a psycho biological linguistic system based finally on dna base lines which are named in this context as linguons l i n g u o n s out of which the english capital letters can be easily molded in coding relations of um, uh, t a base lines also called barcodes or pin pin codes etc this relation of letters to uh, the base lines is like that of doors and dashes to letters and numbers in the morse code as uh, i have already uh, explained i give below one of the various possible modes of uh, base line renderings of english capital letters just to convey the idea that it is possible to render the capital letters of english in a pin bin sequential mode or a barcode at base line sequential mode the figure is given as figure 14 on uh, page 45 of my book dna to divinity reproduced here for easy reference this is only one of the different possible modes of uh, barcode resolutions of english capital letters actually the vedas states that all forms and letters originate for originate from consciousness move as shakti that is power and appear as subject that is shabda and object that is artha at first in the subtle form of mind and is condensed generated by the samskaras and then in the gross form of language as the expression of ideas and physical objects that is called artha in this sense the letters are hidden 
fields of outer speech as the letters of the genetic code are hidden seeds of the outer physical body. This is how the Vedas explain it is a little difficult to understand. The alphabets of various languages in this sense can be seen as closed systems of codification of consciousness. In fact, it should be possible to reduce the alphabets of all languages into barcode combinations and so from this point of view, the English language need not be unique as a donor of the linguistic symbols of consciousness as above shown. At the same time, it is not possible to overlook the special relation of English language to the science of life which no other language can claim. Thus, one, the genetic code scripts are known after the English letters ATGC of DNA and AUGC of RNA. The IHSO patterns are symbols of DNA perceived in this study. They are English capital letters. The IHSO symbols of the church dating back to the 4th century are strangely English letters, letter symbols. Perhaps this would have been the same even if the English language were not known. They are actually uh, icons of uh, the logos or God consciousness as compared to the DNA symbols as icons of the self in DNA. There cannot be any doubt that the realized outer structure of the English capitals as given above have a definite depth genetic base. This goes well with the following words of Lenerberg. He thus wrote, There are many reasons it to believe that the processes by which the realized outer structure of a natural language comes about are deeply rooted. Species specific inner properties of man's biological nature. At best we may assume that we may assume that a certain mechanism has the capacity to organize itself in more than one way, that is, depending on certain conditions of a number of possible modes. This formulation makes it clear that in any case, we must assume a biological matrix with a specificable characteristics that determine the outcome of any treatment to which the organism is subjected. Thus, the search for innate properties is well within the scope of biological inquiry. That is exactly what uh, I have tried to do here also. The possibility of hanging linguistic structure or English to the mode of organization of consciousness as above perceived is not as strange as it might seem at first. In fact, it is not the syllabic nature of these alphabets, alphabetic codes as such, but they are symbolic content that counts in the depth genetic study of consciousness as life principle. They are tied up with the letters of the English language, may or may not be accidental, but highly significant 
as it is the unraveling of the structure and ordering of consciousness in the in a, in a linguistic mode and that too of an infragenetic character. The significance of the above finding is not as much that English is a natural and living language as that consciousness has an alphabetizing tendency and that it can be studied and transacted through the mechanism of symbols, through the medium of symbols similar to the letters of the English language, which for this reason, no doubt, as a unique status and a special place in relation to depth uh, genetic studies on consciousness on the one hand and on the origin of languages on the other. Even the number 26 of the English language, English alphabets, add up to 8, that is 2 plus 6 equals 8, which is a central number linked to consciousness as a later explained. Actually, the number 8 belongs to a unit of form of the um, double helix in that one turn of the helix has the figure of 8 form. And when this figure of 8 with a one twist is opened out, you get a circle. So these are interrelated. Circle uh, 8 transformations. And in this process, you have also a cross symbol appearing in the, in the uh, cross section of the line, inner lines of the figure of eight. These are later discussed in relation to the fracture and co-mixture of the Eucharistic bread and the signing of this bread with a uh, Eucharistic uh, blood. This I shall take up later. Now here we come back to Robert C. Burnwick who has recently discovered that for all the world's languages there are two fundamental types of structure, each the mirror image of the other. The first type is the structure used in English which again points to the key place of English among languages. Another way of looking at this is that there is a there is nothing strange in this inference on the uniqueness of the English alphabets as all languages must be coded systems of consciousness in their own right. But we are not able to decipher the intricate ways in which uh, consciousness is encoded in each uh, such a linguistic system and of how they relate to English as a model for such an organization. Even though linguists are agreed that all languages have come from a common source, they have not yet succeeded in tracing the original language for which original English no doubt is a finger post, if not the psychobiological clue in itself. In fact, English is a living language. The depth genetic association of English alphabets with the structure of consciousness as above presented receives support from other sources also. English is thus assigned the status of a literally living language by Linda Goodsman as revealed through the following quotation. The English language formed from Anglo-Saxon alphabet is literally alive. All other languages, whether based on the Anglo-Saxon or different alphabets, only exist and aren't truly alive.
in this sense. I mean, and this is not to be construed as a prejudice from an English speaking person. Lexigrams do not work. They are not valid in any language other than English. This is something for you to seriously ponder because uh, the reason behind it is the most profound of all mysteries. Like any living thing, the English language keeps growing and evolving, even leaving the fossils of dead words behind. Original English language, that is primordial English, bruised and battered as it already was after the fall of man, was further split, fragmented, cut and sliced into a myriad of alphabets, symbols and speech patterns during the period of the Tower of Babel. The original language of man above conceived should be the progenitor of all languages handled by man from Eden to earth and the one spoken in tongues by the apostles at Pentecost. It must have originated as the language of the soul in Eden and actually fell, fell with uh, Adam to the psyche and physical levels and got diversified at Babel. It must have given rise to the languages and dialects over 12,000 as we know now, spoken by men of all times and races ranging from Taki Taki T-A-K-I dash T-A-K-I, a South American language with the smallest vocabulary of only 340 words to modern English with the largest vocabulary of 490,000 words plus another 300,000 technical terms. The central position of the English language in the linguistic grouping of languages further support this. Consider from the above point of view of the evolution of languages. Linguists say English occupies a central position. Experts in linguistics have expressed the opinion that there should be hidden biological innates for language development, though they are not yet been uh, they have not yet been able to trace them. They have also pointed out that linguistic ability is a psyche level faculty. In fact, the logogram concept presented earlier in these talks provide a depth genetic linguistic coding base for the structure of consciousness on the one hand, and the intrapersonal and interpersonal communication on the other. These and other observations made earlier in earlier lectures are possible hints, hypothetical though they are, of the origin of life and language in a common mode as linked again to form. Form creation via morphogenetic fields of which I shall deal later. It says that morphogenetic fields are uh, psychic fields from which the physical fields have originated. This is exactly what the Genesis writer has also uh, cryptically and hiddenly uh, written in the Bible, uh, the Bible verses on creation of plants and animals. They were first created and formed, then they were further formed from the dust of the ground, created by word and formed by the dust of the ground. I shall come to details of this later. This presents a grand unified scenario of life, language, form and logos 
as belonging together in creation is superunity, as I call it. The Bible states very clearly that the origin of life is from word Proverbs 4, 22-23. With this I shall stop today's lecture. Thank you.